We're going to look at an example problem. This one is a little bit tricky. Fire nozzle reduces in diameter from 7 centimeters to 0.75 centimeters. Water flows at a rate of 420 liters per minute. Determine how much force must be exerted to keep the nozzle stationary. So basically what's happening is we've got a fire hose and it narrows uh, to the nozzle and the nozzle is quite a bit narrower than the fire hose. And so as the water moves through here, it's initially moving with some velocity V1, and when it comes out, it's moving with some final velocity V2. And since it got a whole lot narrower, the velocity had to get a whole lot higher. That means this water accelerated. And to cause water to accelerate, we need a force. So the hose is exerting a force on the water to speed it up and push it out the end. That means there's an equal force back on the hose, right? Newton's third law, that's trying to push the hose backwards. And if you've ever turned on a hose, uh, to high high uh, water flow rate, uh, you'll know that the end of it will shoot back and forth a little bit. That's because Newton's third law. The hose is pushing on the water, the water pushes back on the hose. So what we have to do is figure out how big is that force that is accelerating the water. Then we know how much force it takes to hold this hose stationary. So it's easy to fall into the trap of, oh, we're solving Bernoulli's principles equation, let's write Bernoulli's principle. But this is really a Newton's second law problem. We need to figure out the acceleration of the water. It's an equation of continuity problem because we know uh, the volume flow is staying the same. So as the velocity increases and the area decreases, the volume stays the same. So let's think about what we know. We know the volume rate of flow is 420 liters per minute. Uh, v over T is equal to 420 liters over one minute. And if you do all the math on that, this is the same as 0 0.007 cubic meters per minute. Okay. We also know that A1 V1, this is velocity as opposed to volume, equals A2 V2. And we further know that velocity A1 times V1 is equal to the volume rate of flow. Uh, area times velocity is volume uh, per time. So this is volume over time. And you'll notice I'm not putting a subscript on that because the volume rate of flow is constant. Okay, so now what we can say is Newton's second law says that net force is equal to mass times acceleration. Acceleration remember is just change in velocity over time. So this is equal to mass times V2 minus V1 over T. Uh, and mass, if we go to the density equation, uh, density is mass over volume. So that tells us volume times density is equal to mass. So I can rewrite this as we've got volume times density instead of mass times V2, which is velocity over time. Uh, but I also have this time. I'm going to pull this time out. So I'm going to say, OK, I'm going to pull this T out. I'm going to put it here. And now I have V2 minus V1. This is equal to the net force. Well, volume over time, that's something I know. Uh, density times V2 minus V1. I don't know V2 or V1, but I do know the density of water. So let's look at how I can get V2 and V1. Well, that comes from back here. A1V1 equals the volume uh, rate of flow. So that tells me V1 is equal to volume divided by time divided by A1. If I just divide both sides of that equation by A. Uh, and so what I can do is I can replace V2 and V1. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. So this is volume divided by time times density. This is volume times V2, but instead of V2, I'm going to use volume divided by time times A2. And instead of V1, I'm going to use volume divided by time times A1. Now, you see this volume divided by time is actually in both equations. So this is equal to volume divided by time squared times the density times 1 over A2 minus 1 over A1. Okay, We know A1 and A2. We have to do the math to figure it out, but since you know the diameter, uh, A1 is equal to 0 0.035 squared pi, and A2 is equal to 0 0.0375 squared pi. 
375 squared pi. You can throw that into these equations and you know the volume rate of flow, that's this 0 0.07, uh, that's cubic meters per second. And so throw all of that into this equation. We know the density of water is 1,000 kilograms per cubic meter. So I have 0 0.007 squared times 1,000 times, and there's pi in both of these things, so I'm gonna go ahead and pull out this one over pi. And then I have one over uh, A2, which is 0 0.00375 squared, 0 0.00375 squared, minus A1, which is one over 0 0.035, squared and do that math that's the net force accelerating the water because that force is put on the water the water puts that same force back on the hose and that's the force we would have to apply on the hose to keep it from accelerating